China has just unveiled something extraordinary, the HQ-29 Satellite Hunter. Once only rumors, this advanced interceptor has now appeared in full view, and it's designed for far more than ordinary defense. With the potential to reach beyond 500 kilometers and even target satellites, the HQ-29 signals a dramatic leap in space technology. So what makes this system so unique, and why does it matter? For years, the HQ-29 was a ghost in the defense world, whispered about in online forums, hinted at through grainy photos, and debated by analysts who wondered whether China was quietly building something new. That changed dramatically in August 2025, when rehearsals for Beijing's upcoming national parade revealed transporter vehicles carrying unmistakable hardware, the HQ-29 Satellite Hunter. These were not blurry leaks or speculative diagrams anymore. They were high-resolution images of a six-axle transporter with two massive cylindrical canisters mounted on top, each measuring about 1.5 meters in diameter. The scale alone set it apart from previous systems, hinting at a capability designed to operate at extreme altitudes. Until that moment, most analysts had linked China's long-range interception to the HQ-19 system, an established platform capable of tackling high-altitude threats using hit-to-kill technology similar to the American THAAD system. But the HQ-29 looked far larger and heavier, with a dual missile layout that suggested something more ambitious. State-linked media quickly described it as a double-barreled satellite hunter, a term that fueled speculation that this system wasn't just meant for atmospheric threats, but could potentially extend its reach into space. That phrasing pointed to a mission beyond traditional missile defense, intercepting satellites in low Earth orbit as well as dealing with advanced airborne threats traveling at incredible speeds. The timing of its reveal was no accident. Parade rehearsals are designed for visibility, and this was China's way of showing the world that a new chapter in high-altitude interception has begun. Unlike earlier leaks, where observers debated whether oversized containers on a rail car were truly part of a new defense platform, the HQ-29's public rollout left no room for doubt. It was real, it was ready for display, and it was intentionally presented as a symbol of technological progress. To understand why the HQ-29 matters so much, you need to look at the structure of China's layered defense. For years, China has fielded the HQ-9 family, systems designed to engage tactical threats at lower altitudes. They act as the first shield, targeting incoming dangers closer to the ground. Then came the HQ-19, a system operating at higher altitudes, drawing comparisons to the U.S. THAAD for its hit-to-kill technology. But in this layered arrangement, there was always a gap. Neither the HQ-9 nor the HQ-19 reached far enough into the upper atmosphere or near-space environment where modern threats increasingly travel. That's where the HQ-29 steps in. It appears tailored for mid-course engagements the stage where a missile or object travels through space outside the atmosphere. At this point, trajectories are more predictable, giving interceptors a better chance of success. The HQ-29's large missile canisters support this theory. Their sheer size suggests powerful boosters and larger kill vehicles, enabling operations beyond 500 kilometers from the launch point. This is a significant expansion compared to what earlier systems offered. But there's another layer, the potential to target satellites. Low Earth orbit is crowded with assets crucial for communication, navigation, surveillance, and even civilian services. A system capable of engaging objects at that altitude introduces new strategic considerations. It means that the HQ-29 is not only a shield against high-altitude threats, but also a tool that could reshape the balance of space activity. While China has previously tested anti-satellite technology, this is the first time a dual-purpose system has been rolled out in such a visible way. This fills a missing piece in the strategic puzzle. With the HQ-29, China now demonstrates a progression from tactical to high-altitude to near-space interception. The system bridges the space between regional protection and capabilities that lean toward global reach. It shows intent to construct a defense network that doesn't stop at the atmosphere but extends into orbital layers as well. And importantly, it highlights a mindset shift from reacting to threats in the terminal phase 
to engaging them earlier, higher, and more effectively. The HQ-29, therefore, isn't simply an upgrade. It's a redefinition of where China sees its protective umbrella starting and ending. It closes the once clear gap in China's architecture, signaling that the boundaries of defense are now being redrawn at altitudes where satellites orbit and exoatmospheric interceptors dominate. The HQ-29's reveal doesn't exist in a vacuum. It has immediate and far-reaching implications for global security and the technological race in high-altitude defense. For one, it places China in direct comparison with advanced systems already fielded by the United States and Russia. The American Standard Missile 3 SM-3 is a proven exoatmospheric interceptor capable of targeting objects outside the atmosphere, while Russia's S-500 MPL-19 Nudal systems are designed for similar purposes. By publicly displaying the HQ-29, China signals that it is ready to enter this exclusive club of nations with high altitude and orbital interception technologies. The dual missile design is particularly noteworthy. By housing two large canisters on one transporter, the HQ-29 maximizes the probability of successful interception. If one missile misses, another can follow almost immediately, giving operators a higher chance of success against fast and unpredictable threats. This is an efficiency upgrade compared to single launcher designs, where reloading or redeployment would waste precious seconds. Observers also point out that the transporter resembles those used for Russia's S-500, suggesting that China has drawn inspiration from existing global designs but adapted them to its own needs. The broader implication is how this reshapes the conversation around space. Satellites have always been strategic assets, but a system like the HQ-29 adds a new level of vulnerability. If it can reach low Earth orbit, then communication satellites, navigation constellations, and even space-based observation systems must be factored into new risk assessments. This doesn't just affect military planning. It influences global reliance on satellites for everyday life, from GPS navigation to weather forecasting and internet services. For international observers, the HQ-29 also symbolizes a larger ambition. It demonstrates that China is not content with regional capabilities limited to immediate defense needs. Instead, it is actively positioning itself in the conversation about global security architecture, particularly in the domain where Earth's atmosphere blends into space. This is a realm that has long been dominated by American and Russian platforms. Now, with the HQ-29, China is visibly present in that space. The debut of the HQ-29 Satellite Hunter is more than the rollout of another high-tech system. It's a turning point. For the first time, China has revealed a platform that doesn't just operate in the skies, but reaches into the edges of space, potentially targeting both high-altitude threats and low-Earth orbit satellites. That dual capability places it in the same league as the most advanced systems fielded by the US and Russia signaling that the competition over space security has entered a new phase. What makes this important is not just the technology itself, but what it represents, a clear statement that the boundaries of defense are shifting higher than ever before. The HQ-29 closes a major gap in China's layered protection and highlights how space is becoming the next frontier where global powers will test their capabilities. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more updates on space exploration and scientific discoveries, and don't forget to leave a comment below. Also, you can visit our website, spaceinews.com. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.